Hey everybody, welcome to this Cubase for Beginners tutorial. I am John Merritt from Born to Produce and you are going to learn Cubase and music production by following along and making a complete track from start to finish. Now don't worry if this isn't the exact genre that you want to produce, I guarantee that this is still the best way to learn Cubase and you'll be able to take the skills that you learn here and apply them to any genre that you like. Here is a clip of the track that you're going to make and then we're gonna get right into it. Feeling like I'm on the edge, wanna hide inside my head, you know that it ain't true. You can follow along in Cubase Elements Artist or Pro. It's loads of fun, really rewarding, and the first three lessons are completely free and enough to get you started. So let's do this. All right, this is the Steinberg hub that you see when you load up Cubase. On the left-hand side is news from Steinberg, like when there's a new update available. On the right-hand side, we can load up projects. In this case, we're gonna come down and click Create Empty. It'll ask you where you want to save your projects. So I've already created a folder on my desktop called Cubase Beginners. You can create this folder wherever you like and call it whatever you want, and then click Select Folder. So very quickly, let's check that we have our projects set up the same way. So you come up to where it says Project, then go to Project Setup at the bottom. Make sure that your sample rate is 44.1 kilohertz, and you've got 24 bits selected. Click OK. Everything else in Cubase should be set up OK, but if you run into any problems whilst using Cubase, just Google problems in Cubase and watch this video. So in Cubase, the area highlighted in blue is our project window and where you spend most of your time in Cubase. The area in the middle with the grid is where we arrange all the parts or elements of our project into a song. There are three zones around the outside of the project window, which you can show or hide with these controls up here. For now, we actually want to concentrate on the right hand zone. So just make sure this one's showing and we want to go to the media tab, which is where we find audio samples and other content to add to our project. We're going to use the samples that came with the tutorial and to find any samples that you have on your computer, you need to click on file browser. Just a quick note, if you bought the tutorial, you'll find the audio samples that you need in the work files folder of the download. If you haven't bought the course, there is a link to the free work files in the video description. So download and uncompress them onto your computer. And if you're not sure where to put them, just stick them on your desktop so you know where they are. And then in Cubase in the file browser window, you need to navigate to wherever your work files are. Mine are just on the desktop in the tutorial download and then we go to work files and then the audio folder. So you should now see the audio files, but if like me, you can't see them, what you need to do is come down with your cursor until you get the double headed arrow. And when you see that, just click once and then you'll see all your audio samples. We can audition these samples just by clicking them. If you don't hear them automatically play, come down and make sure that this auto play button is highlighted. And you can adjust the volume here if the samples are a bit too loud. All right, let's get our first sample in. Now, I almost always start with the kick as it serves as the foundation of the track and it gives us a beat to work to. So you could, if you wanted to, actually just drag the kick into your project and Cubase will automatically create an audio track for you. However, for drum sounds, I recommend loading them into a sampler track. We're gonna go through this in simple repeatable steps, but very quickly come up to the top here and make sure that adapt to zoom is showing in this box. It might say bar in your version of Cubase. So just come up, click and select adapt to zoom, which just means that the grid changes automatically as we zoom in and out. Okay, so step one to getting your samples in, we're going to right click the kick sample and we're gonna select create sampler track and you'll see your first track appear in the project window and you'll see this appear in the lower zone. So your channel might be a different color, it's probably gray. So if you wanna change that to yellow, just hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and then click the little colored area and select yellow. I recommend using the same color as me so it's easier to follow along as we progress through the course. 
So this showing in the lower zone is what I called the sampler, which our kick has been loaded into, which you can see there. And you can also play back the kick by pressing the keys down here. Just so you know, the blue key represents the natural pitch of the kick. If you've got a MIDI keyboard plugged in, you can also use that to trigger these keys. So that's great, the kick's now loaded, but how do we get it to play in our project? So step two is we need to draw in a blank MIDI segment. The easiest way to do this is to hold the Alt or Option key on your keyboard, and you'll see when I do, my cursor changes from a selection tool to a draw tool. You can also get to the draw tool by right clicking, selecting it there, or you can select it from the toolbar menu up the top. So I'm just gonna use my selection tool and hold Alt, and at bar five, I'm gonna click and draw in a one bar segment. So from bar five to bar six. So we're a bit far out at the moment, so let's zoom in a bit. We'll cover multiple ways of doing this, but the first way I'm gonna show you is just to come up to the timeline and you'll see my cursor change to this four headed arrow. Just click and drag down to zoom in. Okay, step three, we just need to draw in some notes. So we're gonna double click our MIDI segment and in the lower zone, you'll now see the MIDI editor. This is where we can draw in the notes that represent our audio samples, in this case, the kick. And again, down the side, you've got keys that you can press to trigger the kick being played. Just gonna scroll across a little bit. Now, before we draw in any notes, I want you to set the quantize preset here to 116. So this just gives us plenty of control over the grid. And as mentioned, C3 represents the natural pitch of the kick. And just like in the project window to draw a note in, I can hold Alt or Option on my keyboard, which turns my cursor into a draw tool, or you also have the draw tool up there in the toolbar. So I'm holding Alt, I'm clicking and dragging, and I want a note which is just half a beat long. So you've got beat one, two, three, four and we want a kick on every single beat. So I'm just gonna carry on and draw a note on each beat. If you want to, you can change the length of these notes by grabbing the end or the beginning to resize if you need to. All right, so that's the three steps. We're gonna repeat them again in just a second, but let's play back what we've got. So for now, I'm just gonna hide the lower zone and the right-hand zone. I can make this a bit bigger if I want to. And what I need to do is to put my playhead at bar five. So you have to come up to the timeline to do that where you get that four headed arrow and just click wherever you want to start playing from. But before we play it, one thing that you should always do when you load in the kick is to turn it down. To change the volume of an element in Cubase is really simple. Just make sure you have the left hand zone showing and make sure that you've got the track selected that you want to turn down. Then just come over to what's known as the track inspector. And this is the volume here. So we just click on the actual number itself and then just drag down till it says minus seven. You can actually click on the fader if you want, but it's just a bit more fiddly. And now whenever we add another element to the project, we will turn that element down to match the volume of the kick. So the kick volume should barely change throughout the project. And what this does is stop the project from getting too loud as we add more and more elements. Now we also want to loop this section so we can focus on it whilst adding more drums. So if we go to the timeline again, and if we go up a bit further, you'll see that my cursor turns into a draw tool and I can click and drag out a loop region. Then I activate it by going to the transport panel and clicking activate cycle. If you get the size of it wrong, no problem. You can click these little control points in the top right or left corner to resize it. So now when I play it, it's gonna loop round and round. All right, great. Let's go through the steps again and add the clap. So I'm gonna to go to my right hand zone and step one is find the sample you want. In this case, that's clap 22. I'm gonna right click it and I'm going to create a sampler track. I don't need to see that, so I'm just gonna hide my lower zone. And then step two is to draw in a blank MIDI segment. Again, just select the draw tool. I hold down Alt and then click and drag. And if you ever need to resize this, you can grab these control points in the bottom left or right corners to resize it. 
Then step three, we need to draw in the notes. So I'm gonna double click on it, which will open up the MIDI editor in the lower zone. And remember, we're gonna use C3, because that always represents the natural pitch of the clap. Now very quickly, I'm gonna go in and just turn down the clap. So make sure that the clap channel is selected. Go over to the track inspector, and I'm just gonna turn that down. We'll just go roughly minus seven as well, like we did with the kick. So in almost all music, the clap or snare falls on the second and the fourth beat. So we're gonna draw in a note on the second beat. Again, I'm holding Alt or Option on my keyboard and just drawing in two notes on beat two and beat four. Now let's just quickly play back what we got. I'm gonna hide my low zone. Okay, let's go through the steps once more and add the closed hat. So again, come over to our media browser, find the closed hat or sample that you want, right click it, create sampler track. Don't need to see that at the moment, so I'm just gonna hide the lower zone. Draw in a blank MIDI segment by holding Alt or Option and clicking and dragging. Before we go into the MIDI segment, I'm just gonna turn that down as well. So just come over to the track inspector in the left-hand zone and turn it down. Anywhere around minus seven should be fine. Now we can double click to go into our MIDI segment. Make sure we're again on C3. And then we can hold Alt or Option or select the draw tool to draw in our notes. So in house music, you can have various hat patterns, but what gives house part of its signature sound is an off beat hat. So we're gonna draw in our notes, but from the middle of each beat. So here, here here and here. All right, so let's do that. So I'm holding Alt or Option, clicking and dragging. Didn't make that one long enough, so no problem. I can just resize that. And then again, click and drag. So notes on every half beat. Let's just hide my lower zone and my right hand zone. And let's have a quick play. Okay, so there we have a very basic house beat to start off with. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, you're going to learn how to create a chord progression, even if you have never touched an instrument in your life or even heard of music theory. It's really cool and easy to do. So to continue on to lesson two, follow the first link in the description below. Just scroll down the page and you'll find the videos. You can also check out everything you're going to get out of the full course if you wish to. And just to remind ourselves of the overall goal we're shooting for, here is a clip of the final track that you're making. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Feeling like I'm on the edge. Wanna hide inside my head. You know that it ain't true.